Hi everybody, this is Mike from Focus VR. Uh, thank you for joining me again today. If you've been following along with this uh, tutorial, you should be at this stage now. We have built our basement environment, our drum kit. We've brought that into Unity. In the uh, last one, we added all our sounds onto the drum kit. So if you want to follow along, all the tutorials to build this entire thing are available on YouTube. So have a look on my channel and you can find all those. Um, just to show you where we're at, let me uh, quickly press play and jump into the air. And we can now play these drums. And pressing the A will play our bass because we obviously can't use our feet. Um, I wanted to look at expanding this experience a little bit. And there was a couple of ways I could go. I could either turn it into sort of a game where you play along to music. One of the issues for that with um, with building it here is I don't have any good music to play the drums along to and any music that I find has got copyright issues. Uh, the second route I can go is more of an instructional type um, game where it will show us indicators coming down the street screen when they hit a certain point that will tell us which drum to play and which hand to play with and that actually works out really nice for practicing any rhythms that you may want to do on the drums uh, it teaches you which hand you should be using for the drums and it allows you to add in any new ones as and when you want them so i've chosen that route to go and this video is going to be all about setting that up so I hope you can join me, I hope you follow a, follow along and create anything if you do. Let me know and let me see it. Um, so let's get started with um, changing this into a game really. Okay, so we're going to create our indicators and to do that we, we want some sort of backboard. So I'm going to place a backboard here and we'll spawn an indicator at the top. That'll come down the backboard and when it gets to the bottom of that, that will be the indication to the player that now is the time to play this particular drum. So to do that, let's create an empty and let's just call this indicators. And let's create a cube inside here and this will form our backboard. If I was um, building this as a proper game, I would probably spend a bit more time on this backboard, but this should be good for our purposes and we'll have this as five centimeters deep. Now we've got seven instruments. Uh, I'm going to make each indicator 30 centimeters wide. So that means our backboard needs to be 2.1 meters wide. And in, in terms of depth, uh, our room is 10 meters and I want it to spawn close to this wall. I'm about two, three meters into the room where I'm sitting. So six meters should be fine. And let's just move that into place so we'll get it um, to spawn just against that wall there so it's just sticking in a little bit so we'll get it to spawn into that wall and then come down to here actually it looks a bit big so let's just set this to five meters uh, we can act, because this is all part of this parent object we can actually move and adjust this later on out however much we want so we'll just set it to five meters for now and let's create some indicators. So let's create a new empty and let's call this indicators. And let's create a new uh, cube inside here. And we'll start with the hi-hat first. We'll go hi-hat, snare drum, bass drum, uh, each of our individual toms, so one, two, three toms, and then we'll finish over here with the cymbal. So this one will start with the hi-hat and I'm going, it needs to be 30 centimeters wide. I'm just going to make it 10 centimeters tall and uh, 20 centimeters deep. Uh, we want this to start at this backboard here so I move the parent indicators object so everything we've put under here will be in the right place and we'll just move this to minus 3, oh sorry minus 2.5 because this is 5 meters wide and we want it to be starting to the zero. And the hi-hat one we want to start right at the edge and we made this to be divisible by 3, so this is the wrong edge, minus 0 0.9. So you can see that this object is now right on the end of here. It's 30 centimeters wide, which will allow us to create another 6 right next to each other. Um, so we were going to want some way to distinguish which one's which, and to do that we'll use colors. So let's uh, 
create a new folder inside our materials called indicators and let's create a new material and we'll call this one hi-hat so this is going to be our hi-hat indicator material and we'll make this yellowy gold just to just to match our symbol so when this this is going to instantiate up here move down hit this point and then that's when we know we now need to play that instrument so we've got pretty much everything we need there to start. Let's just move these up a little bit. So it should be, uh, I made this five centimeters, that's 0.2. So 0.075 should be sat exactly on top, which it is. Um, so we now need a script, something to say to the game, when should I spawn an object? Where should I spawn it? How long should it take to get down here? And we're going to want our indicators to tell us to whether we're playing with our left hand or our right hand. And the way I've come up with to do that is to essentially use a string. So let me open Notepad uh, and I'll explain what we're going to do. So we're going to create a string and that string we're going to split up and that's going to tell the system whether to spawn an object or not. So we're going to use zero means don't spawn an object at this particular time. R means spawn an object and tell the player to play that with their right hand and L is going to say spawn an object and tell the player to play that with their left hand uh, and that will allow us to create a string of any length really and indicate to the player what to do so we can go play with your right, left, right, left, right, left, don't play, don't play, don't play, right, left, right, left. Um, that opens up a number of possibilities for loading um, notations from uh, files, transferring them over the internet, you can create some, share them with your friends, stuff like that. So it really opens up a lot of possibilities by using this sort of uh, string split it up. There's multiple ways you could do this, like creating an array of certain objects that tells it how to do it, but we're going to go for this simple split. Um, the next thing we need to do is tell it how often it should be spawning those objects and we're going to just use simply four beats per bar so four over four and we'll we'll make that adjustable speed so we can adjust the beats per minute to match whatever song we want to play so let's do that by creating a new script and we'll call this uh, indicator indicators and let's create that and let's uh, open it properly so we've got a new indicator script in here and we're going to need a few things to to get us started first of all we're going to need the object that we're going to spawn so let's create a public game object and call this prefab so that's going to be a reference to our prefab we're going to need a string for our notation so let's create a public uh, string notation uh, we're going to need a speed so how often should I, should I be spawning one of these objects so let's create a, a float for that which allows us to be more detailed and we'll call this the speed we need a indicator as to whether I, I should be playing a note at this particular time or not so let's create a public actually this can be a private float because nobody needs to know what it is so let's create a private float of next play time and we need something to tell us which note out of this string I'm going to be playing. So let's create a private int. Uh, let's just call that current note. And I think that's everything we need. So in this update, we need to say, we need to check, is it time to play a note or not? And this update is gonna be called once per frame, as you can see from the notes. And we're going to say, is it time to play a note? And if it is, what note do I need to play? So to do that, we can say if time.time, .time, and time.time .time is the time since the game began in seconds, is greater than our next play time, then I want you to spawn an object. So once we've once we spawn an object, we need to set our next play time. So the next play time is going to be the time.time uh, .time plus our speed variable. So that if we set that to one second it will take the current time add one second to it and then this update command will keep getting checked and when it's ready it will play again so we know this is going to keep looping round 
And now we need to say, right, I've got to play a note. What note do I need to play? And we're going to use our notation from that. So we can say if notation. And if you remember, we said if it's a zero, then we're not going to play a note. If it's a L or a, a left or a right, then we're going to play that. So we're going to use a substring to break this string down. We go the start uh, position is going to be our current note, and the length is we just want one character out of that string. And we can say if this is not equal to zero, then play a note. So if it is equal to zero, it won't do anything, it'll just reset the time and it will continue. And then we need to increase our current note by one at the end. So that will keep that will. Uh, increase that note and the next time it will check the next note. So inside here we know we now need to play a note so let's um, create a new function which will uh, instantiate our object for us so let's call this uh, create note and in here that's what we want to call so we can call create note remember my brackets. So we want to instantiate an object now and we want to instantiate that object, we want to move it back six uh, or five meters because that's the depth of our board and then we want to tell it to move towards the bottom of the board and when it hits that bottom of the board that indicates to the player to play and we're finished with that so we can now destroy that object. So let's do that here. Let's do game object temp game object equals instantiate so let's instantiate our prefab and I'm going to use the parent of uh, of itself so whatever this script is um, assigned to so that will spawn an object and set the parent object to that and it will spawn it at zero 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 uh, as its position but we want to move that back five meters now so we can go temp game object dot transform and if we adjust our local position that will be local to our parent object and we can just equal this to a new vector free and we want it to move I think on the Z axis uh, minus six meters and let's just check that this is minus it's not it's plus so we want it to move to and it's a five meter board I keep saying six meter boards but it's five meter board and um, so we want it to move it back five meters and then we want to tell it to move this object from top to bottom now there's a number of ways you could do this you could create an animation that moves uh, over a certain time but that will need uh, you need to pass in some other variables like the speed and assign a a magnitude value to that uh, that animation. So we're going to use iTween. I'm not sure if anybody has used iTween before, but if not, it's a it's a great tool to use. So let's pop into the Asset Store and let's uh, add iTween to our application. So let's it's iTween by Pixel Placement. Very popular, and it's uh, as it says here, it's an easy animation system for Unity. Um, and that's exactly what it is. So we'll just install this. Let's import it. Shouldn't take long to do this. It's not particularly uh, heavy or lots of objects. And when this finishes, let's, uh, let's just wait for it to compile scripts. There we go. We should have a plugins folder over here with pixel placement and our iTween. And that's just, a, it's essentially just a script. And we're going to use that script now. So let's jump back into our. Now, iTween itself uh, will take a little while to get used to. So I'm not going to um, go over it in too much detail. We'll probably save that for another episode. But let's uh, just tell our object here that we want to move. So we will use itween.move to and we need to tell it which game object it's moving so we're moving our temporary game object and we're going to use an itween hash and this is essentially allows you to pass in a string of arguments and the hash will work out from that exactly what you want to do to this game object so we want to move our position and we want it to move it back to zero 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 so let's put in a new vector free 0, 0, 0 
and we want to move that object over a certain time so let's go for two seconds um, we want to set an ease type on here so ease types will determine how am I going to move this object now there's multiple ease types on there they will some will start off slow speed up finish fast some will bounce when it gets down to the bottom for us we want to use a linear because we want it to just animate at the same speed all the way down so we'll just set this to i between ease type dot linear there's a website out there i think if you find the i tween documentation uh, it's got a link to something that demos all these different ease types and you can see you've got quite a few options in here as to what you want to do we're just going to use linear the other thing we need to do is we're adjusting the local position here and i tween by default will move uh, the global position so to change it we can just do is local and true and once we've finished with this object so it's going to take two seconds from the top to the bottom when it hits the bottom that indicates to the player that he's going to play and we've finished with that note then we no longer need it so let's uh, just destroy that temporary game object in two seconds uh, so that should be it anything that is not a zero will create a note it will spawn a prefab set the location to the backboard move it down over two seconds and then destroy that object so let's save there and let's go check if it works or not ready now so let's just press play oh i think we've definitely forgot something here we've uh, we've forgot to actually uh, give it any information so let's uh, create a prefab that we can pass into there so in prefabs let's create a new folder called indicators now it'll take us a while to set this first one up but once we've done the first one the other seven should be actually really quick so let's just move our hi-hat into there and on this hi-hat indicator let's that's going to spawn multiple scripts actually so let's uh, create an empty called hi-hats and let's copy this script from here Let's paste into there let's just remove that script so what I was actually doing in that instance is I was spawning multiples of these objects with this indicator scripts and that's not what I want to do I just want to um, I've just deleted that when I needed it um, I want to just spawn a box just this, this just this cube so let's uh, remove that from there we've now got this script on an empty and we can uh, put our box prefab onto there and let's just put some in here so let's just go right 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 left 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 and let's put a, a missing a couple of misses in the middle and let's set the speed to one so it should do this every one second let's save and let's press play and we should see it spawn ah, so you can see it spawning the object there but it's spawning it at zero 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 as opposed to uh, the minus nine position that we actually want over here I've got a red line on my screen there I'm not sure what that's from I'm not sure if you can see that red line but it's moving um, it's probably because I've got something selected and you can see the other issue that we've got is the parameter name is the a start index length is wrong and that's because our current note keeps going up but we actually run out of uh, string to to chop up so let's just correct those few issues there so that's because our hi-hat spawn point where it's creating it as a parent is not in the right place so let's move this to minus 0.9 that should now spawn it uh, in line with that transform and let's go fix the issue of this uh, length parameter so when we're coming in here it's just increasing the current note over and over again which is obviously a problem because if the note length runs out we we can't do a substring on there anymore so let's just put a check under here so we can just say if current note is greater than the notation dot length then set the current note back to zero and now that's essentially saying um, if this if it's too long set it back to zero and it'll just repeat then around our pattern 
so let's let me just make sure I've saved that and let's uh, let's press play and uh, this should now loop around and we shouldn't have this uh, argument issue anymore so we can see it's spawning in the correct place and then it's missing two then left 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 which is exactly what we said and apparently we're still getting the this issue so let's see what that is uh, if current note is greater than uh, greater than or equal to because this is uh, we're actually zero based on here as you can see it's spawn three miss two spawn 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 and that matches this uh, one thing you'll notice is we're not indicating to the player whether it's left or right we're just spawning an object so we need some way of indicating whether this is um, a left or a, or a right player so under our prefab we need to decide how we're going to do that and for our purposes let's just very quickly add, add some words above so let's create a text mesh pro if you've not used text text mesh pro uh, it's definitely worth uh, using uh, particularly in vr it creates much sharper um, text than the 3d text that comes by default um, so it's definitely worth using uh, text mesh pro and you can see that creates as a nice text mesh and let's just uh, let's just size this up properly so i'm just going to put this in line with the uh, top of our object here uh, let's adjust the scale so it uh, doesn't look so flat and let's just use the words right or left and just uh, just bear with me while I position this so we want that to be roughly in the center on there just above the surface on there and that looks fine and let's centralize this text and at the minute it's uh, it's definitely too big so I'm just going to scale this down so it, the edges mark onto there and this can be our right indicator let's duplicate that and call this left and let's change the text on there to be left without the capital E and by default we want both of these to be hidden and now we need some way of this uh, this script here being able to turn these on and off and to do that we'll add a new script on here which we will call uh, in hand indicator let's create that new script and this really just needs a reference to each of those text objects so we can do public game object left hand public game object right hand and we don't need start or update and now let's just assign these right and left hands to this uh, script once it's compiled and comes back in uh, so let's put the right hand on there and the left hand on there uh, let's press apply to apply that to the prefab so every time it spawns it will not have this left or right and let's uh, update our script to determine which one we're going to we're going to show so we in this create note we want to determine whether to show the left or the right hand um, but we don't know whether it's left or right so what we want to do is pass in whatever the current note is and then we can query if that is the left or right so we can just do the same thing that we did before so notation dot substring current note one and in here we can have a string of hand so now we're just passing in whether it's r or l and then here we can say if hand equals l then turn on that text mesh that says left and we know on our temporary game object we've got a component of hand indicator so we'll just uh, we'll just get that reference and we'll say dot right uh, dot left hand sorry 
uh, dot set active is true and we can uh, just copy and paste that now so we can say if hand equals l then right hand dot set active equals true so now when these objects spawn it should be able to put the words right or left above them so we should get free with right miss a note and then free with left so right 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 miss miss left 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 perfect uh, so we can use that to to um, essentially play along to the drums we can use this notation on each of those so all we need to do now is create multiple indicators and multiple prefabs so let's create a new prefab here and let's call this snare and we'll uh, and under the indicators let's duplicate this one and call this snare and let's set the position so this will be minus 0.6 and let's just drop that into there just so it's in the right place it should be zero and let's do the same with that so just so we're holding them there and let's create a material for our indicator so let's create a new uh, material and call this snare and let's make this i don't know uh, let's go with a purple color and let's just drag that onto there all the indicators are working what we need to do with that is set that to a new prefab so under my prefab so let's just drag and drop the snare in there so that's created as a new prefab called squat snare with this purple color and the other thing i'm going to do is just change the color of this drum to be purple well the color of the string uh the skin to purple so let's uh, just drag and drop that on so that's just a further indicator that this drum is this purple color and under the snare indicators we just change this prefab to snare and let's just change this the opposite way around so left 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 miss miss right 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 and that should now play our snare indicators as well so as you can see it took us a while to set the first one up but it's really quick for our next one and it's just repeating through that pattern now did I set it out to exactly the same? Oh, I had two spaces in there. I wondered why it was uh, slightly different. So now we should see them uh, exactly the same, just the opposite hands. So once we've checked this, let's do the le rest of them. Yep, so that's coming through nicely now. And we just need to now duplicate, continue that process. So let's duplicate the snare and let's call this base. And let's call this base. And we want this to be minus 0 0.3. I want this to be a new prefab, indicators prefab of base. And we need a new colour. So indicators create new material base. And let's give this a I don't know, green colour. And let's colour our base green as well. And change this reference to be our base. And that should work so we won't test this time we'll just continue so now we will have um what's this this is our height on uh, let's create a new prefab with the height on let's set this one to be that one and let's give this a new color And while we're here, let's just create our other one. So high tom, medium tom, floor tom, symbol. So high tom, mid tom, floor tom, symbol. And let's decide what color we want those to be. So our high tom, that's our high hat, sorry. High, high tom we will have as, say, blue. Mid tom, we will pick a different colour, <laughs> orange, running out of the colours of the rainbow here. And floor tom, let's do this nice bright blue. And symbol, I'll use a I'll use a yellow colour again. It's right on the other side, so you're not going to mistake it. So that's our colours ready. Our high tom, we need to apply our high tom colour. 
and we need to set the position to zero and we want to add that onto there let's duplicate that and we'll call this midtom i'm sure you're getting the idea now midtom create that as a prefab tell the midtom script to use the midtom move this to 0.3 bring in the indicator materials so midtom put that orange color on there duplicate and float on call this float on drag that into our prefabs move this to 0 0.6 assign our float on material to there and to our drum assign our float on prefab Oh, which we've done already let's duplicate this and call this symbol let's move this to 0 0.9 and let's call this symbol let's create that as a prefab pull in a symbol prefab and assign the symbol material Now you could assign this symbol material to the symbol as well but i'm just going to leave it as gold it's, it's close enough to color and uh, i prefer this gold to adding that sort of bright yellow to it and that should be everything let me just make sure i've assigned all these looks right so if we press play now we should get all these indicators coming down on each of these um on each of these we've got an issue with the colors there so i've obviously missed one out uh, so let's just correct that make sure we're calling the right ones it's probably because I never applied the uh, the changes that we did to these prefabs so I'm pretty sure everything else I got right and let's run that again just gonna have a drink and that's much better so you can see it's calling these down so why don't we quickly create a drum beat okay i was just getting up the uh, youtube channel that i've been using to uh, determine which notations we need to play so what i've been using is if i bring this uh, bring this over we've got this uh, channel drum beats online so shout out to him for these uh, cool drum beats it's actually a really cool channel uh, and he's got this 20 must know drum beats for beginners and he displays the notation down at the bottom now you should be able to with this process change any notation so if you find some drum beat notations you should be able to change them so I thought I'd walk you through how I'm doing uh, one or two of these and then you'll be able to copy that process so if we look at this drum notation here this bottom one indicates our bass drum this one in the middle indicates our snare and this one at the top, this cross, indicates our hi-hat. Now it doesn't tell us right or left here, but uh, he's playing the hi-hat with his right hand, snare with his left, and he's obviously playing with the bass with his foot, but we can't do that, we're, we're using the A button. So we're going to take this notation here, and we're going to turn that into our notation. So I'll just move that off the screen. And while I'm thinking about it, under our bass notation, it says left or right, but you're not playing the bass with your left or right, you're playing it with the A. So I'm just going to change these both to say A. So whichever one of those it pulls up, it'll display an A above the um, above there to let the player know that press the A key to play this particular instrument. And let's start with the hi-hat. So if we look into our hi-hat, we're saying you at the minute we're saying right 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 miss left 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 but if we look at the notation here we're well playing the hi-hat on every beat so one and two and three and four and so we want to play that on every beat so let's do that so and it's with our right hand so it's one and two and three and four and so that's the uh hi-hat indicator and let's have a look at our snare so the snare we miss miss hit miss 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 hit so let's copy that across so under the snare we go miss miss hit with our left 
miss, 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 hit with our left and miss. And then the next one we do is our bass drum. So let's have a quick look at that. So bass drum, we hit, miss, hit, miss, hit, miss, hit, miss. And we'll do that with the A key. So it doesn't actually matter whether we're passing left or right for this. So we will just use L. So we hit, miss, hit, miss, hit, miss, hit, miss. And we've got nothing else. So there's, um, there's no high tom. So let's take this off. There's no mid tom. So take that off no floor tom so take that off and no symbol so this should now spawn these at how we've said one issue that i'm just thinking of now is if this is blank it tries to do a substring on on a blank string which is not going to work so let's handle that before we run so in our update if we play actually if it's blank then we don't want to do anything so we can do if notation dot length is equal to zero so equal to equal to zero then just return uh, so what that will essentially do in, in, the update, un, in the update command if there is no notation then just return and it will never do any of this bottom stuff so that should stop it from crashing so let's have a look at this And you can see it's now these still say left or right and that's again because I didn't apply this so let's have another look at that and see if that's right so you can see we're getting the right notation now and we should be able to follow these and get a beat so let's uh, let's see what it sounded like playing that at 70 beats per minute and we've got our set to one second so let's play and see if I can uh, copy that beat so we and you can see it's a bit slow So let's uh, let's speed that up, and to to do that, we need to know how fast we should be calling these objects based on the beats per minute. And he's using seventy beats per minute over there. And I found a website where, if I just bring this up, which has a BPM to seconds calculator. So let me just bring that over. And it's this toolstud.io, uh, so you should be able to find find this. I think I just searched for BPM to seconds converter, and he was using 70, so let's do the same. And the length of one beat is 0 0.85, so let's just copy that, and let's put that into our speed. And the speed is controlled independently on each of these at the minute, but because it's because each of these objects is sharing the same common value and the same common string, you can see we can edit the speed and it will apply the changes to all of them. Um, so let's just put that into there. So now that should play at the same speed as our YouTube video. That's a different one, we're not doing that one. So we should get that same sort of speed. So let's uh, let's run that and check again. It's definitely looking much faster. And I think we're actually we're going slower because he's using the um he's got 70 beats per minute, but he's playing a beat on the and so he's got he's doing beat and two and three and four and and ours is going one and two just because we should be in that seconds we should be doing the same so we need to divide this by two um so let me get a calculator out because i can't do that in my head so 0 0.8571 divided by two uh, 0 0.4235 should be able to just paste that in so now that should be set to the same speed that he was playing at which looks extremely fast I'm not sat in exactly the right place, have we? And 
as you can see, I'm not the best drummer in the world, and that is definitely way too fast for me to be able to play along to. Um, uh, but so because of that sort of speed, we don't want to be adjusting these every time. We want some way of centrally controlling that speed so we can actually adjust it each time. So we probably want to create one um, one location for that speed and call that from the script wherever we want. So let's just do let's do that quickly. Let's create a new empty. I'll just call this uh, controllers. Let me just put this right at the top. I tend to put all my controllers at the top, um, and I can and use this to create like multiple scripts. So let's create a new MC on here, and let's call this uh, speed controller. Let's add a new component called speed controller, and let's just create a script. Now I'm just going to use a uh, static for this script just so I can call it from anywhere within the application. I would normally create references to a speed controller as opposed to creating a static but for the purposes of this it's just going to be quicker just to create some static so we don't have to keep going to our scripts and, and create references to everything. Um, a static essentially makes this globally available everywhere so and we need to uh, give it something so we're going to create a global static of the type speed controller called instance and then in our start we're going to assign this instance value to this speed controller so we can do uh, if instance is null then assign instance so we can say instance equals uh, get component speed controller uh, there'll be lots of arguments out there as to whether you should use statics or not uh, in the singleton pattern. Lots of people say don't use them ever, it gets confusing. I actually think if you're creating a short application and it makes sense to use a static and you're not going to be getting confused, then feel free to use one where you think it's right. If you want to get more detailed into whether you should use uh, statics and uh, singleton patterns, then go ahead and Google, but you'll, get, you'll see lots of uh, arguments going on as to what is the best process and nobody can seem to agree. So I happen to think if it works for you in your particular instance, then use it, but don't overuse it for the sake of simplicity. Um, if you're building a big application, if you have too many statics in a big application, it starts to get confusing and you, you should really create references to the scripts as opposed to creating global lots of global statics. That being said, we'll move on from there and uh, I'm no doubt that will start off many a conversation on whether you should use them or not. But for us, we're just going to use them uh, in this tutorial video. So we will need a public float of speed and we're going to use that speed in place of the speed assigned to these scripts. So in our indicators we are currently calling speed here so I'm going to delete that we no longer need it and where we're adding the speed we'll, we'll use our speed controller value so speed controller value dot instance dot speed and that will now use that. One thing that's worth doing is in the speed controller, change it from start to awake. So when this will start before all the other start routines, so you know that this is going to actually get assigned first. And when this updates, if I saved it, so you can see the speed values disappeared and it's now controlled by uh, by our speed indicator here so let's just set this to 0.5 which I think is about 60 beats per second and let's just check that that is working and if it's at a speed I can actually play this rhythm uh, at least looks okay so I'm getting a little bit confused let's see if I can get this right Clearly not. One more time. Okay, so you can see a little bit more practice needed on uh, playing that particular rhythm, but I think if I spent a bit more time in there, I would get that rhythm correct. Uh, the other thing I noticed is this is slightly off position and this white is a little bit distracting so I'm just going to uh, create a new material in here let's create a new material called backboard 
and uh, let's give it a darker color because it's uh, it's definitely a bit glaring so we've got a nicer thing and it was also way too flat so because it's in here we can actually just adjust this rotation and it should all work so let me adjust this rotation to about there make sure visually we can see it and that should make it play in a much sort of better position let me uh, before I do that let me maximize this on play so you can you can see closer what I'm seeing and get into position and we're definitely going to get it right this time I seem to be hitting this because I'm not in the right place. So you can see actually there by the end I was I was much more in time so the idea that doing this will help you with that timing I think I've just proved there um, and what you can do now with that is copy some notations and stick them into here adjust the speed there and you'll be in a position to add any notation in you want and play that uh, particular drum beat obviously that causes a few problems in that you don't want to have to read that notation every time and you don't want to have to set that speed every time also if you're practicing you may want to have a slow speed and then slowly increment that speed so let's do that next and have a way of being able to loading new indicators if we want to and adjust the speed while we're playing First we're going to create something to adjust our speed controller and to do that we're just going to create some kind of uh, UI interface that will adjust this speed value for us. So I'm just going to use this space on the wall here and let's, uh, let's start by creating a new empty and just call this, we'll call this UI and inside here let's create a new empty and call this uh, BPM selectors and let's create a new uh, cube and we'll use this as our as our button I'm sure you could create much nicer buttons but let's just use this and let's scale it down to look something like a button and that should do and let's have some text on that button so we actually know what it's doing so let's create a text mess pro rotate this round and I'll just position this so just uh, just bear with while we uh, while we position this and it's going to say let's start at, let's start at 60 beats per minute so we don't need this to be as wide whoops that's definitely not going to work for us <laughs> and let's move this into place I'm just going to go into top view here, just make sure we're getting it into the right place. We'll just uh, just close to there and there, and let's just centralize these. So we'll centralize on the horizontal and centralize on the vertical as well. So that creates us our first button. Let's call this 60 beats per minute. I'm not sure what PMG is. Must have had my uh, fingers in the wrong place. And I'm not sure what BMP is, right? We'll get there this time. So beats per minute, and this uh, can we'll just call this text. So what I want to do is whenever someone selects this, then set that speed, and we need some way of uh, activating this, some way of um, knowing that the user wants to activate this button. And to do that, we're going to do a rear cast. So we're going to cast out from the end of our controller in a straight line and if it collides with that 60 beats per minute trigger and then they pull the trigger then we know that they want to activate that so let's create that uh, that process so in our controllers let's create a new MC and call this selection controller let's add a new uh, selection 
So this is just going to create a new script called selection controller. Just make sure I've got the right thing open. Yep. And it didn't open it after all that. So selection controller. There we go. And we're going to need a reference to our hand, so at the, the start point. So let's create a public game object of uh, and we'll use our right hand, uh, so sorry for all those left handed people out there, this is definitely focused around uh, right hands and let's um, now cast a ray, so on every update I want to cast out a ray from the end of the hand and see if it collides with, the, um, with that UI button so let's uh, let's do that now so we're just going to do new a new ray called ray equals new ray and we're going to cast this out from this right hand uh, dot transform dot position and we're going to cast that forward so just transform dot forward and that's created as a new ray and told it which direction to go and then we need to create a new uh, ray cast hit and we'll call this hit and now we want to cast that ray out and check if it hits anything. So we can do if physics uh, dot ray cast, and we'll cast out the ray, and we will retrieve back the hit. And this is the distance that we want to um, set out, send that ray. So we know our room is uh, ten meters by ten meters. We sat in the middle, so we could cast out a ray for five meters, but let's just extend that a little bit and cast the ray out for 10. Uh, this will definitely make sure that no matter where we are in the room, we can uh, we can hit uh, that object. So let's just set it to 11, just so we make sure we can go through the walls. Won't be a problem for us, but it's worth just adding that extra little bit in. And you can see the next thing we can uh, put in there is a layer mask. Uh, the layer mask will essentially say to the ray which layers do you want me to check if there's any collisions and we've got multiple uh, colliding objects uh, inside this we've got colliders on our drums and um, colliders on these things coming down we've potentially got box colliders so we want to create a layer mask that says only check for things on this one particular layer and in our instance the layer that we're checking against is the UI layer so we take our 60 beats per minute and we put that onto the UI layer uh, which is there for by default and we'll just change yes for children. So that's changed all the, sorry just getting some post there. So that's changed all these objects to now be on this UI layer and when we cast out our ray we need to pass in a layer mask. So a layer mask is just a int so we can do, let's do this as private int layer mask. And in the start, we now need to assign this so we can go layer mask equals uh, layer mask dot uh, get mask, and then you pass in the string of the layer that you want it to do. So that will now say only get, only hit anything that is in that UI layer, and everything else will be uh, essentially ignored. And then we want to check. Uh, when it hits something we, we need it to actually do something so we would at this point in time this would return if it actually hits something um, but it wouldn't it wouldn't have anything to activate so we need to create a script for it to activate so let's create a new script called um, let's call this change oops let's call this change speed and I can't spell, so let me change that there. And let's go into this value, and we, we're going to want a speed variable that we can change per button, so let's create a public um, float of speed. And let's create a function which is um, public assign speed was going to use change speed but I've used that already so let's use assign speed and then we can just change our speed controller dot instance dot speed equals speed 
Uh, we need to void this because we're not returning anything. So now when we press the button over that UI, we can call assign speed and it will change the speed value of our speed controller, which will in turn will change the next play time on our um, on our notes. So let's jump back to our selection controller and we can uh, first we want to check is the trigger pressed and if you watched the first episode we went through OVR input so we can do OVR uh, input dot get and we want to use let's bear with me a second my phone's ringing it's just my daughter and let me know that she wants to be picked up she's doing the Duke of Edinburgh award so she uh, she needs picking up shortly so I will have to disappear again soon uh, where were we so I was creating this OVR input. So if I open up the uh, the documentation, I, you can use this documentation to work out which button it is that you actually wanting to select. And in our case, we want this uh, right index trigger. So we'll use the raw mapping, and I, the reason we're using the raw mapping is I want to. Uh, I only want this to happen on this uh, right index trigger. So if we jump into here, we can say OVR input dot get OVR input dot, um, and the input is raw axis one D right index trigger. So raw axis one D dot right index trigger, and I believe that returns a um, it returns a float and not a bool because it, it returns the position so zero is off and then as you press that down it increases up to one so we can say if the right index trigger is greater than not point uh, is greater than not actually then we know that the trigger's been pressed so we also know that we're on this layer so we can set the assign speed so we can uh, go hit dot collider so that is the hit which collider it's hit with and then the game object and get component which our component is speed uh, is change speed and then we can just say assign speed so when we hover over there it, and we pull that trigger it will get whatever object it's hit it will find the change speed and it will assign that speed so let's check if that actually works and we'll need a we'll need a couple of um, couple of things to change. So I'm just going to open up Unity and let's do some big difference here. So we've got 60, and let's once I, Unity catches up with me, let's change this to uh, 120, so we can see the difference. Change this text 120 beats per minute. You can see we're going onto two lines there, so I'm just going to shrink this text down. And we need a speed, so I will use uh, the same BPM calculator. So if I look at 60 beats per minute, it should be one second per beat. So this is one and 120. Uh, I'm just typing these numbers into here. So convert 120 is 0.5. Unsurprisingly, it's half of that. So when we activate these, we should see a big difference in the speed that these objects are coming down. In our selection controller, we need to make sure we assign our right hand, which is the OVR camera rig, tracking space, and right hand anchor. And let's press play, uh, maximize so you can see what I'm doing. And we've got nothing to show us whether we're in the right place or not here, except for the speed. So I'm just going to have to guess. Uh, if I'm hitting the right place or not, uh, which I don't seem to be able to do, and I can't tell whether I'm pressing it. So let's uh, create a uh, some way of notifying when we're actually hovering in the right place. So let's just create a sphere. Set this to 0.02, 0.02, 0.02. Might be a bit small, so let's just set it to 0 0.05. And we're going to now move this selection point based on wherever that hits. So let's call this selection indicator. 
and in our selection controller let's create a new game object so public game object uh, selection pointer and we'll assign that selection pointer and when we're inside this we will activate that selection pointer so we'll say selection pointer dot set active is true because it's hit something and selection pointer dot transform equals hit dot point so this is uh, dot transform dot position so the hit dot point returns back a vector for here where it hit that collider and we're just going to move our selection pointer to that point and we're going to activate it so we can see it so when we come into this we'll turn it off by default so if it's not hitting anything it will it will essentially never turn on and that should be a way of us seeing if we have actually pointed at the correct place so drop our selection indicator onto there and let's press play it again and I might need to activate my left hand that's not working exactly how I would expect in it so let's uh, let me check and see if we can work out exactly why that's not working so in our selection controller we get the mask of UI we activate it we fire a transform forward Ah, this is the problem I'm firing out the transform forward of the world which is always forward so that at the minute that ray cast is always going directly forward what we want to do is cast it out at the right hand dot transform dot forward so wherever this is pointing will then be forward and that, that should now work And there you go. So hopefully you can see that. Let me just check. Yep, so you can see this ball is now on one of these. And if we activate this trigger, it should slow these down. So let's set this to 60. And you can see this is now going much slower. One, two, three, four, and then speed this up. One, two, three, four, one, two, three so yeah that's definitely much quicker now um, and we're able to set the speed so why don't we just create a few more a, a few more of these so let's duplicate duplicate and let's do let's set this to 140 uh, one, yeah, 140 I guess we can create as many of these as you want and let's set this all the way up to 200 and it, let's bring our BPM calculator back in and for 140 is 0.4286 and for our 200 which is definitely going to be way too fast for me to be playing uh, let's convert that and that's 0.3 seconds per beat Okay, good. Um, one thing we probably want to do with this is whenever we change the speed, we probably want to give the user enough time to get ready for that speed as opposed to just as, as soon as you click on this, all the notes suddenly come faster. We probably want to restart the beat from the beginning, have a small pause and allow the user to, to get ready for that. So what we want to do inside this... Um, inside this assign speed if I inside here we want to have a reference to all those indicators and say right pause for five seconds or two seconds we'll go let's say five pause for five seconds and restart the notation so to do that we need a reference to each of these indicator objects and I'm I'm going to create a new uh, let's create a new uh, drum kit uh, controller and inside here we'll create a reference to each of these that we can then use and again I'm going to use a static so let's do public static uh, drum kit controller 
instance in the let's change this to awake and remove this because I don't want it to say that and then we can go if instance is null then instance equals get component drum kit controller so that will assign the drum kit controller to our instance when this object works and we need some references now and these are all what did we call these uh, let me just check indicators so we want a reference to all these indicators inside our drum kit so let's go public um, indicator and let's start with the hi-hat and another indicator which is our snare and you can see where I'm going here I'm just going to create an indicator for each of these so let's uh, just duplicate these down so snare bass uh, high tom mid tom floor without a capital floor tom and our symbol and we'll assign those references and then inside here let's create a new um, function which we will call I want this to be publicly available and we'll call this restart uh, beat and then we'll go through each of these and we'll restart them so let's first create a time that we want to restart with so let's create a new float of next play time and let's just do time dot time plus five so that will assign a, a play time within five seconds and then we can go hi hat spell that right hi hat dot um next is this next play time or is it have i got this private okay so i've got this private so let's make this public so that we can actually um change it and the same with our current note so we now want these to be public so let's go hi hat dot next play time equals uh next play time and um, yep that's fine and we need seven of these, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and snare. And I'm just going to do a bit of copy and paste in here, the good old friend, high tom, mid tom, floor tom, symbol. And then we want to now do hi hat dot uh, current note equals zero. So that will restart the note. And again, we need seven of those, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So hi hat, snare, bass, high tom, mid tom, floor tom and symbol. So when we call this uh, restart beat function it should reset the beat to start again in five seconds and it should um, restart from the beginning. So in change speed we can do drum kit controller dot instance dot restart beat and in our drum kit controller we need to drag and drop all the references for these so let's just wait for unit to catch me up again so hi-hat snare bass high tom mid tom floor tom and symbol uh, so now what we should see is when I select one of these it should pause for five seconds and start at the new speed so let's check and make sure that that is now is working as expected so we've got a bit of playing going on let's set it to 60 we should see all these stop one two three four five and we should see these start again at this slow speed and let's set this to 200 and one two three four five and there we go you can see them coming back so now when we select our beats we get this sort of pause it finishes restarts the beat and we're ready to play at this faster speed so it's a much nicer user experience than just starting then they're just continuing the beat at the much higher sort of speed now i'm going to go after go pick up my daughter i will be back later so you'll see me flash in and out Hi all, I'm back. As you can probably tell by the lighting around me, it's uh, a little bit later than it uh, was before. It's Friday night at half past seven, so 
full of exciting times for me on a Friday night, not much like when I was uh, younger. Um, so let's continue with where we were. We had just set our speeds and what I want to do now is be able to change these beats from some UI selector so that we don't have to set these beats every time that we want to play. We want to be able to load them from somewhere. So let's create some extra UI and let's assign some beats to that. So I'm just going to duplicate one of these buttons. And in our UI, let's create a new empty and let's call this um, drum beats. Let's just put this copy in. Now in between times, I've gone through the video that I showed you on YouTube, this uh, 20 must know drum beats from drum beats online and I've just transposed a few of them into our left rights and uh, zeros just so we don't have to do that on camera but you saw me do one earlier so if you want to do that yourself uh, you should be able to work that out um, so I've created a, a few of them so let me just open my notes and there's one which is the first called the first beat so pretty much the first one that everybody learns and let's change the text on this to be uh, first beat and let's just shrink that down because that is uh, very large at the minute so let's just put that to 20 and we've got some uh, beautiful looking uh, UI here I don't think we'll be winning any prizes for our UI development um, and on here we're going to need a new script that can store all the string notations for each of these so let's remove this uh, change speed and let's add a new one and call this um, notation load I guess that doesn't make much sense but notation load will uh, will do for now I feel like I could come up with a much better descriptive name than notation load um, and inside here we're going to want some strings so we're going to want a public string for each of our uh, instruments our parts of the drum kit so we'll need a hi-hat and we'll need a um, snare and you can see again where I'm going here so I'm just going to copy a few of these down that should be enough bass high tom mid tom uh, floor tom and then we had our symbol on the end and we don't need that so we'll we can assign all our strings into here and then we need um, a function that the UI the selection controller can call so let's create a, a public void and let's call this change beat and inside here we're going to want to change the uh, beat notation on each of these and in our drum kit controller we created a reference to all our indicators and that indicator has got a notation on it so we can uh, do that inside here so we can go drum kit controller dot instance dot hi hat dot notation equals the hi hat notation of this um, script and we're going to need seven of those so one two three four five six seven and let's just go down and change all these so snare bass 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 high tom mid tom floor tom and symbol i'm sure some of you were thinking he's forgot his snare but actually i haven't this time and the once we've changed that notation, we then want the beat to start. So we can call this same restart beat and that will set the next play time to plus five seconds and it will set the current note of each of these to zero. So at the end of this, we can go drum kit controller dot instance dot restart beat. And that will now change everything for, for each of these. And let me just set some strings in here. So in our hi-hat, Actually, in our snare, we miss left, right. In our hi hat, we play one on every beat, and in our bass, and we don't use any of the other ones. In this is a very simple beat for us to get right first. 
and so now we need to add that into our selection controller so let's open our selection controller and in here when we hit uh, objects in the UI and we know the right index trigger is pressed we need to um, call that so collider.gameobject.get get components and we call this notation load dot change beat and the uh, the astute amongst you will realize that we can't do this we can't call change speed and notation load in the same ui because this one is expecting a change speed script and this one is expecting a load uh, a notation load script so we need some way of telling those apart and to do that we'll use tags so on each of these we'll create a new tag so let's come into here add a tag and let's set this to BPM save that and let's add another tag and let's call this uh, beat let's save that and then under all these selectors let's tag these as BPM and on our beat let's tag this as a beat and now inside here we can um, we can say if the hit dot collider dot tag is equal to bpm then we know that it's going to have a change speed collider so we'll get the change speed collider and if hit dot collider dot tag equals beat then the hit collider is going to have a notation load so get the notation load and change the beat and that should be everything we actually need to do it's nice and simple once you get set up it's quite easy to create these extra little bits on top so why don't we test that now so we're expecting uh, right hand on all our hi-hats some snares and some bass when we click this first beat so let's click play and let's see what we've got so that's the default load that we've got going and let's click first beat and we should see a pause for five seconds and we should see our symbols coming through which we don't for some strange reason we are getting the pause so it's definitely uh it's definitely loading them or is that because i've put the same beat on i think i might have put the same beat on our default as we copied over on our original one so let me uh, let's just check that and let's just delete these off so when we first load into the uh, game it doesn't actually have anything on so we shouldn't see anything now when we first come in but we should when we press first beat let's wait five seconds for these to start and there you go so we did have the exact same uh, beat that we had before let's see if I can get this right actually quite good at that so let's knock it up to 200 and see if we can uh, play the drums at a faster speed clearly I'm starting to get confused so uh, but we can see we can load some uh, different notations out there so let's quickly add in a few more so we've got a few to choose from and I've got a first beat I've got one called classic rock and I've got one called dance beat so let's just quickly add those in so classic rock and then we've got dance beat so under classic rock let's change this to say classic rock and let's change this one to say dance beat and i'll just copy and uh, paste these over so classic rock and all these actually only have the um, the snare, the hi hat, and the bass. They're all just slightly different, uh, but the nice, simple ones for us to start with. I do have another one on here that uses all of the 
all of the uh, instruments so let's quickly add that one in as well so I got this one from a different player so let me make sure that I uh, I bring up uh, and acknowledge where I got this from so I got this from drumlessons.com and this one is called beginner drum fills you'll notice for me I need to be using beginner ones and this guy just goes through and creates a few different fills for us to play along to so I thought I'd use one of those as well uh, and I did the exact same routine I used these use these under here to determine which whether it's a one or zero or a, a, an R or an L so shout out to uh, those guys at drum lessons and let's create that one now so let's duplicate this and just put this down here and let's call this uh, fill one just wanted something that showed all the instruments working as opposed to just uh, those three uh, and we just needed something to sort of chop between so we've got our hi-hat notation and these are longer this is actually uh, 16 beats per bar um, so we'd have to, we're gonna have to increase the speed to get it right on here this is the floor tom I'm just copying and pasted from a document that I made earlier Symbol and finally our bass. Okay, so let's just quickly check those out and make sure that they are loading. It's better to uh, test often than it is to uh, do lots of work and get it wrong. So let's use the fill one so we should be able to see everything coming out here. There's going to be a lot of notes at play. This is more my speed. too slow actually oh, and I missed the symbol then uh, it's uh, ups, up that speed to 200 and let's see if I can uh, do this at 200 I'm sure you all tuned into this video to watch me play drums I think I found my beat definitely do this one I'm quite impressed with myself there for my drumming abilities it was clearly not 200 beats per minute and that's because this notation is actually supposed to be uh, 16 beats in the bar and we've got this set to 4 so we'd probably if we're going to extend this further we'd probably want to start looking at adding in um, some way of changing the number of beats per bar um, but it's that's just going to be a case of adjusting these timings really so if you wanted to create more of these buttons at different times then you can uh, go ahead and do that outside of this video one thing that I did think would be nice to to finish on is the ability for the computer to play back those sounds for us so at the minute we need to get those right but we might want to hear what they sound like first before we actually play them so to do that we need some way of playing the um, the particular drum or cymbal at, at the point where this ends um, so at the point where it reaches here and if we remember when we created this indicator here it comes down and then it destroys itself when it gets to the end so what we can do is use the on destroy script to say right i've been destroyed i know i've got to where i need to be so play the instrument that i need to play so let's have a look at that uh, the script so it should be on our indicator script here and this is saying destroy this temporary game object which is a prefab instance so we need to add something on this prefab that says when you destroyed play something so let's have a look at all our prefabs here we've got our hi-hat prefab and it's got a hand indicator script already so let's use that and let's do a on destroy then uh, do something and we want it to play a sound so we're going to need a reference to a sound here so let's do public audio clip and let's just call that clip and we'll drag and drop this sound that we want to play when this particular one is destroyed 
and we're going to need a source to play that um, audio through now we can add an audio source to the indicator itself because that is going to destroy uh, be destroyed when we um, destroy the object so it wouldn't that audio source would no longer exist for us to play a sound on we could use our uh, drums but the problem with that is these aren't prefabs we've got no reference to them so I think what we'll do is if we look at our OVR camera rig it should come already with a uh, audio source attached I think it is it on the center eye and uh, that's got an audio listener is it on the actual uh, camera rig well I thought there was so have they changed this it looks like they've changed the camera rig since I last used it so it must have come on the update no problem let's just create an audio source in uh, in space and let's call this audio source and this is one of those examples where we probably won't use uh, spatial audio we, we're just going to get it to play at whatever volume it is and let's add an audio source so if you're in my previous video I explained this uh, spatial blend uh, which just sets it from a 2d to a 3d sound and because we actually we just want this to play to the uh, person we're not bothered whether it sounds like it's coming from the left or the right so we can just use uh, uh, set the spatial blend to 2d but we need a reference to that audio source so let's create a new uh, empty here and let's just call this uh, sound controller it's going to be a very simple script this really we could have added this to one of our other scripts like our drum kit controller but it makes sense to have a new script that we assign this to and let's just quickly add the audio source uh, we want this to be public and let's call this source and we could actually create a um, let's create a function on here that receives an audio clip and then plays it through the audio source so let's create a public um, void play clip and that is we're going to pass in an audio clip call it clip and then we'll just say source dot play one shot uh, play one shot allows us to pass in a clip and unsurprisingly it will play that clip once um, we need a way of referencing this so let's create let's just do a static again just so we've got it public static uh, sound controller there's probably people freaking out about the amount of statics I've had in here for no reason but uh, I'm not bothered for terms of this demo uh, so if instance is null then instance equals get component uh, sound controller I just wanted to quickly add this uh, particular one on the end and we need some way of knowing whether uh, to play the sound so let's have a public bool um, play playback audio and that will use that to determine whether we play the sound back or not and then in our destroy script which was indicators no it wasn't it was hand indicator this is why you shouldn't add stuff onto uh, scripts where it shouldn't be added. I should have created a new script really for managing this uh, on destroy. Uh, so on destroy we can go sound controller dot. Let's do a check first actually and let's go if sound controller dot instance dot uh, play playback audio. So if that is true then sound controller instance dot uh, play clip and let's pass in our audio clip uh, so that should be everything we need to do on there we just need to make sure we've assigned these clips so for these clips we'll just use the same audio we've got previously so let's add in our i hat onto this one make sure we apply let's add our snare onto this one into the wrong place let's apply 
and I'm sure you've gathered what I'm doing here just to making sure we've applied all these uh, uh, I've called these somewhere different so let's go I think that's that one finally our symbol and in our cell controller we just need to create a reference to this audio source and let's just tick playback audio because everything should be in place now so when we start one of these clips this playback audio should actually fire so let's select our fill and 200 beats per minute and we should be able to hear what this should sound like if somebody who knew what they were doing could play. You can see now I'm not pressing anything. I'm holding out this hand, but I haven't got a controller. And let's try our dance beat and let's leave it at 200. And let's see what that should have sounded like. So you can see now we're getting all the pieces needed. We're getting all the pieces uh, required to actually expand this into a pretty reasonable way of learning these different beats. Uh, as we've said before, it's not going to be exactly the same as playing a drum kit, but it's going to be great practice for timing it's going to be great practice for making sure your hands are in the right place when they need to be and you can set this up however you want what you probably want to do now is create a, a new ui button where we can turn this playback audio on or off and that's just going to be a case of creating another one of these buttons another script that turns it off and then in the selection controller uh, adding a new tag and uh, call in that script so we've done that a few times already um, that's everything we actually need to cover in this drum kit so I'm really happy that you could uh, hopefully join along and uh, build this drum kit with me I think we've been on quite a, a long journey on here so that's starting from a blank unity page uh, building the environment in blender building the drum kit in blender creating all the materials, we've baked out textures, we've covered some lighting, we've created drum kit sounds, we've created our drumsticks, we've activated VR, um, we have turned it into a mini uh, tutor tutorial um, lessons, I guess, for drum kit. So I'd love to expand this a bit further. If anybody's got any ideas about where they think we could take this or if you've got any requests as to what we could do with this drum kit next um, I'm sure we can come up with lots of ideas let me know in the comments down below and if there's uh, enough interest in this tutorial we'll go back and visit it I would like to probably do stuff like I'd love to bring in some music and so you can play along with those drums it'd be nice when you hit these drums that like these flash or we've got some particle effects maybe we add in some different like rim sound so if you hit with the middle of the drumstick it makes some uh, different sounds on here maybe if you hold down a different button it plays an alternate one maybe we could create some ui for changing the actual drum kit sound so we could change to a completely different sounding drum kit when we select a different uh, piece lots and lots of places where this could actually go uh, thank you very much for joining me i hope you enjoyed this series like comment subscribe and i will see you shortly thank you very much